Hi everybody, no, I'm supposed to look here, okay. Hello everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for coming back. So in today's video, as you guys can see from the title down below, we are going to talk about Q&A. So about a month ago, more than a month ago, I put up a question tag Q&A on my Instagram and my YouTube community. For you guys to ask me questions about me, what you want to know about myself. But you guys kept asking me questions about studying in germany why don't you want to know me <laughs> like i just want you guys to get to know you guys you guys should also get to know me so i was like okay let's do a q and a yeah let's ask me questions what do you want to know about me well some people ask some but mostly we're like based on studying about studying in germany but yeah nothing's poor we could do them like that so let's get right into the video so the first question i have is um would you have studied in germany as an undergraduate student or would you advise your siblings to do so if not if no which country will you pick from yeah if i'd i i do not know if i'd of course i mean a lot of people would have loved to have their undergraduates in outside germany us uk australia canada so yeah if i'd had the opportunity to do my undergraduates in germany yes i would have gone for it Yes, of course, if I have a younger sibling and they want to study abroad, of course, Germany is a very good place to study. Um, UK, Canada, US, Australia, Norway, Sweden, a lot of countries are actually very good to study. So yeah, why not? Um, so another question, the next question. What was your biggest challenge you faced coming to Germany and also schooling in Germany? Miss you, sis. Oh, miss you too. So my biggest challenge I faced coming to Germany, the blocked accounts. Of course, that was a challenge. Even though during my time it was eight thousand six hundred and forty euros, it wasn't that easy for us to. I'm just going to be very honest. It wasn't that easy because I mean I have siblings and all of that. And my parents are not that rich. I not like even rich. That was a, the, the the beginning. That was a main challenge for me. But the rest of the processes was easy for me. I didn't really face any challenges. Now searching for the schools wasn't really challenging for me as well. I kept I keep looking. I have to look at the lens. Searching for the schools wasn't a challenge for me at all. I mean, if you dedicate yourself that hey, you're going to search for the schools, take your time. It's not going to be a challenge. So for me, the even the visa interview wasn't a challenge for me. The whole process wasn't a challenge for me, but the coming up with their block accounts was a challenge for me. Um, yeah. Moving on to the next question, right? When you were applying for <coughs> student's visa for German, did you have to leave your passport at the embassy after the interview? So yes, if you are for German visa, you leave your passport at the embassy for them to do other verification stuff. And you come back after some two weeks or three weeks for your visa, either you've been accepted or rejected. Now it's quite different from US with the I think with the US when you apply for your visa, you get it on the same day. But with Germany, you leave your passport there, then they have to decide whether they'll give it to you or not, whether you actually qualify. Whether you did one your interview, whether you know, yeah. So you have to leave your passport at the embassy. Moving on. If you had new opportunity to choose between England or Germany. Which one would you have chosen? I mean, I would have... To be honest with you, I'm not really a fan of England like that. I know we, we do they speak English and all of that. I'm not really a fan of England. Now, you're going to study in a country. You should also like the country you're going to study in. But it doesn't mean that if I find myself in England, I wouldn't study there. Of course, studying in England will also be easier because... They speak English, I speak English, so yeah. But actually, I never thought of England. Maybe because it's very, very expensive. Also, I never thought of it. And also, maybe I've not really thought about England like that. Like, a place for me to stay. No, but yeah, I can stay there. Like, you know, but Germany, like, obviously. Germany, Canada. Way to go. <laughs> um. Okay. Hi, dear. Is there any age limit for studying master's program in Germany? No, there is no age limit. Hmm, no 
know i don't think there should be age limits i mean education does not have age boundaries you should just be ready and dedicated to study i don't think no there's no age limits no do you sometimes regret going to germany regret is a strong word now if i don't regret i never ever regret even though i've faced a lot of challenges so far studying in germany i huh, i don't want to say regrets because regret is a strong thing now as a human being if you start feeling like a sense of regrets it's can lead to depression not necessarily regrets but i'm like oh why am i here this course is so hard but i mean at the end of the day if you focus you can do it so i've not regretted studying germany germany has been good so far to me like, i like the country it's cool yeah so i've not regretted no um so let's go on okay on the trivial side if you had three wishes to make what would they be hmm three wishes i don't know that's i have a, a lot of wishes right the most important one for me is that i have good good health good health long life i mean good health long life and the fear of god that's my wish that's one wish and the second wish is for me to be successful to be able to take care of my family to be able to help people and all of that to be able to be happy to be able to content with what i do i find a job and happy with the job i'm doing and all of that happiness right and the third one is hmm, third wish okay my third wish i don't say to complete my master's because it's something i'm going to complete it's doable <laughs> okay so my third wish is for you guys to be happy Everybody around me should be very happy, content with what you are doing, find peace, be successful, you know. Yeah, for you guys to be happy. So that's my third wish. Okay. Somebody says, I got acceptance from the University of Rome. So something, something. But I'm much interested in studying in Germany. Please, if I begin my studies in Italy then gain admission in germany without completing my program of studying italy can i stop schooling yes of course you can always change schools you can always change countries if let's say you are studying in sweden and then you don't really um how would i say it um you don't you don't really like the school again you can also you can always change schools but if if it's not in germany then you have to apply for a visa again because you need a, a visa to, to stay to study and work in Germany, so you need to apply for a visa again. That's the whole thing. That's another work again, you know. So it's always possible to change schools. If you're in Germany, it's quite easier. You don't have to apply for a visa again. You just have to change cities and then apply to a school again and go and do your city registration. But if you're in a different country like Sweden, even though they are Europe and Schengen or Italy, Europe, Norway, if you're in those countries, you have to apply for a visa again. Mm, makes sense because, yeah. Maybe I might be wrong, but yeah, that's what I think. I would like to know about five universities in Germany, which does not require uni assist when applying. I don't know. I can only say my, even my school, yeah, some departments require uni assist and some do not require uni assist. For instance, for my faculty, they don't ask for you to apply to uni assist. I don't know for other faculty, so I can't categorically say... This school, this school, this school, this school do not require any assist. So you can try University of Kiel. I mean, University of Kiel, Christian Albert University of Kiel. So for art, as I said, some faculties in my university require any assist. Some do not require any assist. So I don't know University of Bremen, they do not acquire, they do not require any assist. Um, TU Freiburg, um, Technical University of Aachen, TU Aachen, they don't require uni assist and some others. So it's up to you to like search for schools that do not require uni assist. I'm sorry, I can't really give you very good information on this unless you do your research. Thank you very much. Whew, this question, I like it. What is the dark side of being a student abroad? Ah, this is like a whole topic on this one. Like, I feel like if I start talking about this, this video is going to be so long. I'm going to like summarize it, okay? The dark side of being a student abroad. 
homesickness, loneliness, combining work with school. Those two can uh, how do I say it? It's it's deep, it's, it's it's stressful to combine school with work, especially if you are doing a very demanding master's program and you have to work at the same time. It's very hard and making friends, making friends, making friends is so hard. Social life, it's some people will even go through depression. I will believe if you don't know how to you know manage your social life, you don't if you don't know how to to have fun on your own. If you don't know how to do these things now, you studying abroad might be a bit harsh for you because it's hard to actually make friends and all of that. Um, and also, if you are coming from like Ghana or Africa, the method, like our process of studying back in our country is quite different from what we have here. So when you when you come here, you face a lot of obstacles. Like you feel like, oh, this is so hard, I can't do it. But trust me, you can. You just have to fasten your seat belt and and try to um adjust your style to their way of teaching their way of learning and you would try to understand but yeah dark side yeah so i mean i've summarized it right if i want to talk about this topic we're not finished now so let's move on do you apply for the university and scholarships at the same time or you have to get admission before you apply for scholarship so when it comes to scholarship i'm going to be very honest i don't believe really, i don't really have much information on scholarships but yes, you there are some scholarships that are dedicated dedicated to certain schools or certain programs. So first you apply for the school. After applying for the school, you now apply for the scholarship. It makes sense, right? Most of the time that's how it works. But then but then you have to look at the if you want to apply for scholarship, you don't have to apply for just any school. Look at the scholarships requirements, which schools are eligible or which programs are eligible for that scholarship. Then you now go ahead and do your application. When you get admission, you go ahead and apply for the scholarship. Yeah, that's how it works. Somebody said, you're doing good. Do you miss home? I miss home a lot. <laughs> so much. I miss my parents. I miss my siblings. I don't really miss Ghana. I just I just miss my family. Okay, it's now living alone in a foreign country and all of that, going up and down. You miss home a lot. So how do I cope? Me, for instance, I I talk to my mother like every day. My parents, my dad, my siblings, some of my friends. I talk especially to my mother. We talk like almost every day, almost almost every day. So yeah, that's. I mean, with the help of technology, with video call, it makes it easier for us to communicate. So it kind of it kind of helps. It's actually actually it really really helps. Seriously, with video calls, it helps. I would like to know how you book an appointment with the embassy when sending your documents for approval. And what documents we are needed? Ah, so you are talking about sending your documents to the embassy for um attestation or whatever it's called there's an email you have to use and that's a long time ago i don't remember like if i find it i'm going to put it in the the description box below you send an email saying that hello my name is this and i'm trying to apply to schools in germany i would like to certify my documents and then so i would like to book an appointment and then they send you a date and all of that now i'll find that i don't really remember the email you have to and i don't know if that email still works because it's been long so i think it will also be it will be also good for you to go to the embassy you know the embassy there are two right they have where you do the interview and where like they're like administration parts you go to that part it's just if you're in accra it's very close to accra senior high school like opposite accra senior high school you go there, you talk to them that you want to and book an appointment and they do it for you. Or you just search for it. Go on Google and search German Embassy. Get a number, send an email, call that you want to, like, book an appointment to certify your documents. Okay. Okay. All right. I don't know. Maybe it might have changed. I don't know if it, those who have done it recently, please put it down in the description box below how you're able to book appointments for your, certify your documents. Okay. Hello, pretty. My name is Bright, and I want to ask how to apply for high school in hmm? high school in Germany whilst in Ghana. Please, please, please. <laughs> Sorry for laughing, but this person said he wants to know how to apply to high school in Germany whilst in Ghana. Eh? 
I don't know. The high school system is very, very different. And it's in German, like, obviously, high school here is in German. I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe you have to come and live in the country, then you apply. Yeah, you just apply. You just have to apply. You have to be in the country and apply. I don't know if they have boarding schools, they have private schools. I'm sure there are international high schools here and all of that. Just I don't really know much about high schools. I don't really even know much about bachelors. Not to talk about high schools. I'm so sorry. Oh, okay. So let's go back to um. You know, somebody asked how to book an appointment with the embassy. So, so somebody actually replied in the comment section. The person says the appointment system of the German embassy in Accra is usually, but is open from. Hmm. I'm reading what the person know. I'm reading what the person has typed. I don't know if it makes sense, but I think it makes sense. But it's open from Monday to Friday at 12 a.m. German time. So you have to be an owl to book an appointment. Or you can also pray that someone should cancel the appointment so you book it. Wow. Okay, thank you. So this person says, hi, I'm from Nigeria. Okay. While opening a block account, at which rate... Are you buying euro and you and can your local bank send you the euro at your german block account at their rates and so when you are transferring your money to the blocked accounts and you are using a specific bank that bank they are going to use the rates they have at that time do you understand that's how it works because you have like ghana cities or you have naira or the other currencies in you have and you are you are transferring into your block account in your block account is going to appear as euros so the bank you are using at that time they're going to use the rates they have at that the time you are sending the money okay are there a lot of africans in university and are you are your course makes very approachable and also how many percent chance do you have of getting into invest of your choice if you apply to uni assist thanks okay yeah, there are Africans in my class. I think we are like four, like five. Yeah, five Africans in my class, two Nigerians, two Ghanaians, and one Cameroonian. So we are five. And yeah, my classmates are very approachable. They're very helpful. The Germans in my class, we have Germans, we have Indians, we have Pakistanis, we have Brazil, Egypt, a couple of other, yeah, per Iran and all of that. And they are very nice. My classmates are very nice, very approachable. You know, we we they help we help each other a lot. If you, if you don't understand something, you can approach somebody for them to explain it to you. If you need a past question, ask as well. Do you have this? Do you have this handout? Or do you have this? You always get help. Okay, so yeah. And even the Germans in my class are also very very helpful. They are very very nice people. Okay, yeah. And she also asked that. How many percent chance do you have of getting into university of your choice if you apply through uni assist? So uni, uni assist doesn't. It's just if uni assist is just like a, a medium where you submit your documents and they they kind of process your documents to their school. So they don't really have. Is the school the school? You know, at the end of the day, the school is going to determine if you're going to come in or not. So yeah. It doesn't really matter if you use a uni assist, whether it has a high has a high chance of getting to school or not. Uni assist is just a platform to you kind of process your documents. And it depends on the school, you know. Some schools in Germany are like high there. So getting into it is also very difficult. And some schools are not that high. So getting into it into it will be very is okay. Like very, very tight schools in Germany have T M Technical University of Munchen, Technical University of Aachen. I Heidelberg and quite of others. I can't I don't really know all. But University of Key where I am is not there. I mean acceptance rate is quite okay, it's quite high. Yeah. Somebody said, okay, Canada or Deutschland? Canada or Germany? That's a hard one. No, I like Canada. Let's go for Germany for now. <laughs> ah, somebody said, why don't you like following back on Instagram? I mean, you can't just be following everyone like that. Do you guys follow everybody that follows you? I had... I don't know. Yeah. Did you write TOEFL or IELTS? No, I didn't write TOEFL or IELTS. None of them. Because my school... 
my school didn't ask me to submit to for IELTS. So in the University of Kew, that's my university, I know some faculties ask for IELTS, but my for my faculty, they don't ask for IELTS. In fact, you've had your bachelor's in English. I don't know why these people keep telling us to provide IELTS or TOEFL. Yo, we've been speaking English since we were children, like that's what we were brought up with English. So when all these like once you want to school went to school abroad and they ask for IELTS and so forth. To me, I think it's an insult. Seriously, you guys should they should, they should, they should work on that and stop that. We are also native speakers, like uh, hello, Ghana is a, it's an English country, like we speak English, okay? Like you know, English is from from, from nursery to university, we speak in English and you tell us to make in um IELTS. Like, yo. So for me I just um submitted my English proficiency from my university, that's all. So somebody says I was under beholder office in Chia didn't respond to my student visa application over five months. What? What do you think I should do? Go there. Go there, you know, like I know right now getting appointments at the Auslander Beholder can be a very time because a lot of Ukrainians are in the country and they are processing their permits for them. So you can send an email several times and you you not get a response from them. And if you are trying to send them an email, don't send it just once. Send it like a couple of times. Send it several times to so get a response, okay? Else, you know, you need your permits to, you know, work and other stuff. So please, I'm so sorry about this. So yeah, maybe you should also go there and look like you're very sad like just go there go there and then maybe you might get help okay and say so you're yeah, a student that also helps right um I, we have just a few questions to go oh somebody are you single hello <laughs> am i single hmm one day you guys will get to know that right i'm not married so i'm single right i'm not married so i'm single <laughs> So what they said, what did they say? They said you yeah, are single until you are married. In it, what's the type what's the total cost of living in Nigeria to Germany as a student? Hmm. Total cost. So let's let's I don't I'm going to use Ghana series. I don't really know Naira. Maybe you can convert. So right now we have their block account is around eleven thousand hundred and seventy-two euros. That's one. Your flight tickets coming to Germany should be like 500 euros. 500 to 600 to 700 euros, depending on. So I'm going to use euros. 500 to 700 euros for your travel. The, your block account 11,172. I hope you're adding up. Uh, you need to buy some stuff food, winter jackets, and all of that. Let's say 100, no, maybe 200 euros. If you buy a suitcase and all of that, 200 euros. And then you need pocket money, at least 500, 400, 600 euros pocket money, you know. So you can add up all of that. Let's just approximate, like, you need, like, hmm, like 13, not 13,000. Like, approximately 13,000 euros, am I? I don't know, you guys should just add up. Yeah, so do you regret choosing Germany? I think this question someone a different person also asked the question again. No, I don't regret choosing Germany. I'm happy here. Yeah. Alhamdulillah, I'm doing good. So yeah, that's the end of the question. And you guys, you see the questions. They didn't really ask about me like me. Okay, but kind of like some of the questions are kind of related to me, what I think about this, but I regret of yeah, it makes sense. But yeah, that's the end of this video, and I really do appreciate you guys. Oh, so soon the video has come to an end. So you guys don't leave. I keep looking here. I should look here. So please do subscribe to my YouTube channel, like, comment, share, and I'll be uploading another interesting video very soon. Okay, now we are doing it what back to back to back back to back to back. Hey, you need a fear face. You know the fear face. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Choose.